I'd like to invite up Roland Stanley. Roland is the City of Calgary's General Manager of Planning, Development, and Assessment. Please give it up for Roland Stanley. My name is Roland Stanley and I had toast for dinner. <laughs> okay. So when is the last time you thought about globalization? The globalization of people. Where you live matters more than ever. The innovation economy has reversed the role of entire nations in two generations. While cities like St. Louis and Detroit, where I used to work in St. Louis, lost 700,000 people, in less time, Zhejiang, China, grew from a sleepy fishing port to a city of 10 million. This is the factory in Zhejiang. 400 people work, eat, sleep, and go to the movies here. This is the face of globalization on the production side. Globalization has transformed how we invent, what we make, where it is made, who makes it, and who benefits. In 2012, 14 people jumped to their desks at this plant. The company installed anti-suicide notes, nets. This is the face of production, the end of globalization. 60 plus hour work weeks, mandated overtime, limited time off. And when the product arrives at your door, the only North American worker who's ever touched it is the UPS delivery man. 30% of the tin ore needed to meet the world's Christmas rush comes from small mines in Indonesia, many illegal, where father and 12-year-old son work at the base of a 25-meter mud cliff, washing away the mud to expose the tin ore. 12-year-old worries about mudslides that bury people. In 1975, Albuquerque was the home of Microsoft. One product, one client, three employees, and tablets were made of stone. Seattle was a city of despair. Starbucks had three stores and Amazon was something in the Brazilian rainforest. Today, Microsoft has employees who started 4,000 businesses, and in 40 years, the difference in the college-educated people at that place has gone from 5% to 45. This disk cost billions to create the first copy, cents to produce the second. Innovation economies are about human capital, not the production or the physical making of it. It's all about the R&D. That's where the money is. 50 years ago, rich cities like Detroit and Flint had higher wages than Austin or Raleigh. Detroit was the Silicon Valley of its day. By 1975, an auto worker could produce two times as much for each hour of work than in 1946. Today, there are hundreds of auto factories around the world, but very few innovation clusters. The global economy is about creating innovation clusters like Silicon Valley or Cambridge, which are not easy to move. Shifting the production of innovation to lower cost regions is. Clustering fosters innovation. While the internet is estimated to generate 2.6 jobs for every job destroyed, traditional manufacturing only generates 1.6 local service jobs, paying lower salaries. 10% of all USA jobs are in the innovation sector. At the height, manufacturing was only 30%. It is estimated that 67% of the 27 million jobs created over the last 20 years have been innovation jobs. Where is Calgary in that? Are we innovating or are we service sector? In 1980, Rochester, New York was the hub for optical imaging. Kodak employed 62,000 people. They now employ 7,000. Kodak did not innovate and Detroit failed to capitalize on its advantages. By 2050, it is estimated there will be more laundry workers than people working in manufacturing in North America. The world is flat. Globalization is about communications, meaning geography matters less. Levi's opened in San Francisco during the gold rush in 1853. 148 years later, they closed because they cannot compete with manufacturing in Asia. But the genes are still designing. Will Apple build cars in North America? The first 50 Apple I computers were built in a bedroom in this house and sold for $500 each. Production shifted to the garage, then Cupertino, Fremont, cheaper Colorado locations, then Ireland, Singapore, then China. The production end of the innovation economy moves. There are 12,000 Apple employees of Cupertino generating 6,000 local service sector jobs. And yes, they're considering building cars. 90% of laptops and notebooks are made by one of five Chinese companies. This map shows the global suppliers for Apple. The geography of production shifts. The Tim Horton employee in Fort Max makes $19 an hour. Will he still make that when oil is at $50 a barrel? Facebook has 2,500 employees. They generate 50,000 jobs in the app field and 130,000 related service jobs. 12 billion in salaries and benefits. 
U.S. software jobs have grown by 562% in 20 years. Are we failing in Calgary to redirect our ecosystem into something new? Higher productivity equals higher salaries. Microsoft employs 40,000 people in Seattle, about twice as many, or sorry, twice as less than Boeing. But they generate 120,000 service sector jobs. If you are entering a tech degree this year, half of what you will learn will be updated by your third year. Where do you see Calgary moving forward to take a leadership role? San Francisco has changed three times. In the 1970s, it was professional and financial. The 1990s, hardware. Now 70% of the jobs are high tech, clean tech, cloud computing. Bill Gates said to Congress, my basic view is the country should welcome as many people making over 100,000 a year paying taxes and creating other jobs as we can get. In India, has more honors students than we have students in North America. They are going to graduate hundreds of thousands of engineers in the next few years. Are we training for that next economy? I raised two questions tonight. There will be four types of cities in the future. Brain hubs, low tech, the undecided city, and energy cities. What type of city do you want Calgary to be? The second question, the decisions you make every day impact the innovation economy. Are your decisions ensuring globalization benefits everyone? Remember that factory in the 12-year-old boy? There were 12 million iPhone 6s sold the first weekend made at that factory from tin from those mines. At 650 US, Apple makes 300 in profit on every phone. Factories spend $5 to put them together. 72% of Apple revenue comes from this iPad and, and the phone, and the iPad and the phone, and neither existed eight years ago. Did you line up together? How much extra would you be willing to pay for your iPhone, your iPad, your Dell laptop to make a difference at the other end of the global production line? And as the world continues to shift, what does the oil-based economy hold for us? Thank you.